How can you eliminate thousands of vulnerabilities without applying a single patch? That's what I'm going to show you in this video. If you have been doing vulnerability management for a while, you may have noticed that your sporadic patching doesn't really make a difference for the big picture. Well, at least you would have experienced this if you are using an OT asset management system that actually shows you metrics for vulnerability mitigation and eradication. Patching the vulnerability of the month is more like a ritual rather than actual systematic risk reduction. Everybody does it, everybody feels better thereafter, even though the actual impact on risk may be as efficient as a rain dance. There must be a better way to reduce risk, you may wonder. And you are right. In OT, patching isn't the only or even a particularly efficient way to reduce vulnerabilities. Today I'll show you a completely different angle that will allow you to get rid of thousands of vulnerabilities without a single patch. Now, if that isn't something, the approach that we're taking is sometimes referred to as system hardening. In a sense, it means that rather than patching something that's broken, get rid of the troublemaker altogether. Have you heard about software products that used to contract new critical vulnerabilities over and over again? A notorious example is Adobe Flash Player. Now, here's the kicker. If you have Flash Player on your OT systems, you can pretty much bet that it's there for no good reason. So when you deinstall the software, no operational drawbacks are to be expected. Once that it's gone, so are its wounds, and you won't need to bother without new wounds that will emerge in the future. That leaves you with the task to identify all systems on which the bad boy is installed. With the OT-based OT asset management system, this is accomplished in minutes. In the case of Flash Player, we started out with the knowledge that this software is one giant security problem. But what if we didn't have this pre-existing knowledge? This is where things get really interesting. OTBase can tell you which software products contribute the most to your vulnerabilities and therefore to your attack surface. In the CVE workflow, there is a table that ranks your installed software products by a compound vulnerability score. The compound vulnerability score is all the CVSS base cores for unpatched vulnerabilities of a given software product summed up across your installed base. You can also see the total number of affected devices on which the software is installed. For fun and because we can always need an extra level of visualization to make our case for management, let's visualize this data in Power BI. In order to do this, we first export the data to Excel and then import it into Power BI, where we can turn the data into a tree map. This map clearly highlights our worst software products as far as unpatched vulnerabilities are concerned. The picture is dominated by Windows 7, with Windows XP shortly behind. Want to know where the software is installed? Just go back to OT base and double click the list entry. There is some irony here because Windows 7 and XP can't be patched anymore since they are beyond end of support. Therefore, patching wouldn't be an option anyway. But the hardcore insight is that updating those outdated Windows boxes to a current OS version will have a dramatic impact on your security posture. It will make your OT infrastructure much less vulnerable than if you would, for example, patch or update your vulnerable Google Chrome installations. This is just one example on how the OT-based OT asset management system can help you make your vulnerability management more efficient. And, prove and produce results that make a difference. In OT, 
patching isn't the one and only solution for vulnerability management. OTBALS helps you to identify and implement other strategies that work better and also to demonstrate success to management. For more information on OTBASE, visit langner.com slash OT-BASE.